today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a digital clamp meter. This is a multimeter. We can measure voltage, current, resistance with it. This is not a sponsored video. This is just a meter I happen to buy. I got this in January of 2021. It was on sale. I paid 50, approximately $50 Canadian for this unit. Amazingly enough, there's actually some batteries in here. Whether or not they are actually any good, we shall find out. And we have our leads and a little multimeter handbook here. We'll connect our leads up. See the battery case? Oh, it looks like we gotta get the little screw Phillips head screwdriver out to get our battery back off. I built a highly technical lab just to illustrate using the meter uh, to measure some DC values. So over here, think of this as a car battery. This is a uh, 12 volt booster pack. You can use it to boost your car if the battery dies or run items off it. I, have, I will put a link down below. I made a video on this unit a while ago. Anyways, we have our positive terminal here coming out. I get a little 12 volt fan here. Then I got this 12 volt heater, which I bought, piece of junk from China, never did work. It, it uh, heated, I think, once, and now the fans don't even work on it. But I just put it in the circuit because there is an on off switch. And if you see my 12 volt LED light over here, I just put that in there more as a, an on off unit and something we can take a resistance reading on. Well, we're going to read resi DC resistance. Goes into our 12 volt LED. I have another meter here where this obviously a very small amount of current going through the circuit. So I put a meter in line with the whole thing and out of that meter back to our ground, our block, black cable here which goes back to our battery pack. Our little user guide for the clamp meter shows all the things that it can measure. DC voltage, AC voltage, AC current, resistance, there's a diode test, and a continuity. Notice here that DC current is not in this list. So unlike this meter over here we can't measure DC current with our clamp meter but I didn't get it for that purpose I want it for measuring AC current so if we want to measure DC voltage with this meter we're gonna go over here see the the voltage the V for volts has a little squiggly line there. That's for AC volts. Below it, we see the voltage with the straight line. And it can make this, so that's direct current. Now, I'm going to take two quick voltage readings. One across the 12 volt fan. The input of the fan, as we said, goes right from the battery charger or, or, or our 12 volt battery source so over here on the red that lead comes out goes into the fan and it comes out here and hopefully that's shown on the display that's three and our last DC voltage reading I'm gonna take it across that LED light back there 
So the wire that goes into our LED light is here. And the output wire is over here. And hopefully that's coming out. That's going between 7 and 8, so 8 volts. That makes sense. We're dropping 8 volts across our LED light. We measured 3 across the fan, 8 and 3 are 11. And we measured that our total voltage into the circuit was the 11 volts. And I put this other meter over here. This one does measure current. And just for the sake of illustration, I put that in. The whole current in this circuit is 40 milliamps. 40.6 milliamps. This setting down here, that's for checking continuity. Basically to let you know if you have a, a short circuit. Just going to illustrate that quickly. I guess that probably symbolizes a little speaker, I don't know. But at any rate, if you're doing quick troubleshooting and you want to know if you have continuity in a circuit, you'll get that audible tone. To measure resistance with this meter, we put our setting over to the ohms symbol down here. And by the way, never ever take a resistance on something that has voltage applied to it. So I got our little piece of junk heater here. I got that disconnected. And let's get a reading off of it. Without me toppling over my camera or blocking it. So we go on one lead of it and then another lead. I'll tell you, I really don't like the leads on this meter. It's very, very small little um, conductor points there. So basically a very low resistance reading on that. I'll have to actually, you, you can probably see it better than me. Anyway, that's how you measure resistance. What happens there is current comes out of the meter, there's batteries in it that we put in before, goes out one lead in the other and measures the resistance. So if I put the two leads together like that, it'll go to zeros because that's a, a short circuit. No, There's no resistance. Now we're going to measure AC voltage. The voltage that a house is wired. That's alternating current. We flick our switch down to the voltage, the V with the squiggly line there. And we see we can measure up to 600 volts. I have one of the leads of the meter into the plug. Don't do this at home. I'm just illustrating how this meter works. We put our other lead in there. And we see we have 121 volts AC. This is in Canada. I don't know about the rest of the world, but I'm assuming it, that's pretty much standard. One thing I don't like about this meter kit, see that lead? Look at the small little tip on that. I couldn't actually measure this. I had to steal this leads from that other meter that we had in our little test circuit there that we built. Now we're at the point of the video of why I bought this particular meter. Because this meter can measure AC current without breaking the circuit. You put the wire between the clamp like that. I'm just going to move this down. We can see that we have zero amps in that circuit. We start off on our highest rating and then we move down. Now I know there's no current in that circuit right now because this goes to an electric stove. And what I'm gonna do is put it on the 20 amp scale and you can see it's 0, .00, 0.00, it's there's no voltage there. And I'm gonna be back in one second. I'm gonna go turn that stove on.
Okay, I'm back and we can see that we now have current running in the circuit because the stove is on. Get that up there so you can see better. There, so now we got the clamps, the wire right between the, the uh, clamps here. We're looking at about three and a half amps. Now, if I go down to the two amp scale, in other words, this scale will read a maximum of two, maximum of two we can see it's overloaded. It can't read that high. So we're on too low of a scale. Back up to the 20 amp scale, 3.4 amps. So that's the value of this particular meter to me. And for most people, it will, will pay a couple extra bucks for a clamp meter. Uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope that was helpful.